Hello, welcome to the podcast. And I find myself today asking, why is it that sometimes we get so anxious and eager before we start new things? We've all heard that you should say, oh, don't say that you're nervous. Say you're excited. Okay, okay, I get that. And we trick our mind and it does work. I mean, I've done it. It works. But at the end of the day, it's it's a very fine line, isn't it? It's a fine line between that nervousness and excitement. And we're down to the wire at here where we're at before school starts. We have such an early start date. My uh, stepmom is so lucky. She gets to start in September, a more traditional time for a brand new school year to start. But we're starting in the beginning of August. And no matter where you are in school, the school year, when you're listening to this, you know that when it's about time for you to start something new, when it's about time for you to do something that's a little outside your comfort zone, there's all kinds of feelings that we get. And this podcast is dedicated to encouraging you to quiet your fears. Quieting our fears is important. Now, when I say quiet your fears, I'm definitely not suggesting that we get rid of them completely. All right. Or just ignore them. No, I'm not. Now, you guys can learn a lot more about this in not only upcoming episodes, but some past ones. You can look back and you can, I guess, just look up the ones that say fear, because I have talked about this on many other occasions in the past. And I also talk about it in my journal, 30 Days to Higher Hopes, because when we're journaling, we got to be real with ourselves. We got to know where we're at in order to proceed forward with our life. So there's lots of different ways that you can explore this. Um, I encourage you to look at the show notes. If you don't follow the show, what are you doing? Let's do it. We follow the show and then basically it's like your favorite channel. And uh, while we're dealing with logistics, it's interesting how uh, we like to listen to content and we very rarely go out of our comfort zone ourselves to kind of uh, maybe like it or say something, you know, like a, a review. So Many podcasters will say, hey, don't forget to give a review. Yeah. And yeah, I'm one of those. But I'm telling you, I listen to all of them and I really appreciate it. And it also is just part of how podcasters push their own uh, uh, podcast into the world. It's not as if you're going to see normal commercials. It's not as if that happens, but it happens through you giving a review. Isn't that crazy? It's like you have some control here. If you like what you hear and you're enjoying this podcast, why not just hit the review button if you're listening on Apple and just say, hey, I like this episode. It was great. And you'll be a part of supporting this podcast. I'd love for you to do that. All right, enough, enough. Now let's get back to sort of the whole fear thing that pops up, the nervousness thing. Uh, I had several parents email me saying, what am I going to do with all this anxiety that my children have? Hey, I have anxiety about them starting the new year. They're dealing with their own anxiety. How can I help my child through it? Well, one thing is know that if you're feeling fear, it's a very real thing that you're feeling within you. And you can just say, you know, I'm noticing this. I'm noticing this within me. What does it mean? Does it mean that I'm actually excited? Does it, does it mean that uh, there's, there's something that I need to uh, be able to do that can help that? What have, how have I dealt with similar feelings in the past that's helpful? You take a moment to acknowledge. You know, it's like rather than running from it 100,000 miles an hour, just turn around and face it and say, hello. Hello, here we are face to face. Now what? It's a strategy that I talk to some people about in certain situations when it comes to their feeling bullied or feeling like a, a student is, um, you know, oh, they just keep chasing me around the playground with the little guys. And I'm like, well, turn around and look at them. And they're like, what? And I'm like, well, if you don't run, they probably won't chase you. And I wonder if that's the same thing with our fear. If we're not running from it, maybe it won't chase us so much. Can we turn around and say, hello, here you are. But you know, I'm going to face you. And then I am going to be in charge of the next thing that I do. I 
am going to take this in a, the direction that it needs to go in order to have the result that I want to have, right? The result that you don't want to have is to run and hide under a rock or avoid something difficult or put your anxiety all over everybody else through your actions or nonverbal communication. It can be avoided though, right? So you're saying, sure, you say that. How? Well, what I really, I want you to take that minute to, I guess you could say care about you. Believe that you've been through hard things before and you're going to get through this as well. Even if it's supporting somebody else that's going through a challenge, it's even if it's supporting them that's going through their first day, you can do that more successfully than you have in the past. Just put your hand on your heart and breathe in and feel the fact that you're alive Think about the kind of person you really want to be and even give yourself validation. Give yourself care. Say, you know, I love you. I, I love the parts of me that make, uh, make me unique. And I want to lean in to the most supportive, caring, calm version of myself right now. You might have completely different adjectives, but what is it that helps you? be able to get through those tough times, you're going to put it towards this fearful time. So you're not running anymore. You're facing it. And then you're saying, if this was something that was already, I've already been over the mountain, I'm on the other side and I'm looking back and it was successful. What did I do to make that successful? Who did I need to be? What version of myself needed to show up on that day? Questions like that you can't help but confront because you know yourself. You know yourself better than anybody. You just, sometimes we forget that. And we, we think, oh, I needed to have courage. I needed to um, smile more. I needed to prepare better. These are things that you're capable of. And if you are sitting in front of a student, a child, your child, or even a, your friend and family who's nervous about starting a brand new year and thinking about the anxiety or maybe brand new practices for their sport or whatever it might be, you can go through that exercise with them as well and say, what is it that you'd like to have happen? And at the beginning, they might kind of be like, Ugh, whatever, but then Maybe as the day rolls on, you'll see that their mind is working on that and they might get on a roll and they might start talking to you about the things that are important to them and then listen up, listen with your full heart. It's not time to uh, answer back real quick or correct them if they're wrong, but listen, because now they are moving from a place of running from fear to saying, we're moving through this to the other side and we have brought hope into the equation. We've invited hope into the conversation and it happens that fast. It happens in an instant. It can happen within you. It can happen within the person you're talking to through a powerful conversation like that. You envision the fact that you can promote hope rather than piling on to maybe the fear. You can promote hope by just turning the corner as far as how somebody is looking at a problem. And see, I've kind of conceptualized the fact that fear and hope are kind of in the middle of a dysfunctional relationship. And if we look at fear, it's basically just, <laughs> my door just opened. Um, it's basically just a problem that we really don't know how to solve. And so it manifests in fear. But if we are leading from a place of hope, there's a problem. That doesn't change, but we feel as though it's solvable. We see a, a pathway to solve it. So you might be entering into a brand new phase of your journey of life, but do it today with the best version of yourself in mind, and then notice what difference it makes. Uh, I shared with you guys, um, I shared with some of you, I don't know, if you're in my um, email community, then I've already probably introduce this to you or kind of like announced it, but I'm going to be doing a TEDx talk coming up in November. I'm going to talk about this in, uh, in a future podcast as well, but I 
am so excited about it. November 11th in Florida. This has been a goal of mine, a dream of mine. And so it's something that I'm over the moon excited about. I cannot wait to talk to you guys more about it. The more I know about it, the more I'm going to share with you. And if you want to get the full scoop, then you are going to check the show notes and jump on my email community because it's free anyways. And then you'll be able to see it and say, oh, I wonder what's up with share. And then, um, of course, you can always email me back. No problem. So uh, it's time for me to get going. I actually do have a place to go. My daughter was just reminding me and I just had to let you know that because many of my friends and my family are going to be entering their brand new classrooms with their brand new teachers and their brand new schedules. And we need to keep in touch with the hopeful side of ourselves. So I encourage you to do just that. And until next time, keep in touch and take care.